we're going live. We should be live. Hopefully people get notifications. Somebody's already liked it, but we don't have any viewers yet. That's interesting. Um, does show that we're streaming to Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. We've got four people. Oh, the race is on. There are four people watching on YouTube. None on Facebook yet. Hmm. It's, it's, I got well, my I YouTube notification. I told you when it comes to Zuckerberg, there's something going on. You and Zuckerberg, and every week that we do this show, uh, which, by the way, we've been doing a lot of weeks. What is this, our like third year now or something? Let's see here. Let's see. I don't know. If... <clears throat> yeah. So, look, I, I told you a lot of people. Y'all may have saw it, Rex. We were talking about it earlier, and I told you, you know that that girl that was on that plane. You know that the the well, they labeled her the Karen on a plane, <clears throat> and she had this freaking meltdown, right? I, right. And some people say, you know, okay, there was actually somebody in the back that like wound her up and or didn't wind her up, but. So on Twitter, somebody had made a meme. You know me, I'm into that. I, I like his funny. Oh. But but something tripped her out, and boy, she got up, went to the center of the plane, and she's a cussing, using every word. I mean, you, you'd have thought she was in the Navy. And she's talking about, you know, if y'all want to fly on this plane with that da, 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 back there, you, 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 you can die, but I'm not, blah, blah, blah. And you could see the person that was videoing her and everybody in the plane when she started pointing to the person in the back of the plane, they turned the camera and everybody turned their heads to look back there. Well, somebody took that clip and they put this ominous little clip of Zuckerberg, you know, looking like, you know, Mr. Evil or Dr. Evil back there in the back. Well, if you go try to find it anywhere, I mean, and it was like blowing up on Twitter. If you go try to find it anywhere, it's gone. You can't it's find gone it. on Twitter. It's gone on Twitter. They, well, that's they, odd considering that Elon and Zuckerberg are literally going to have a fist fight now. Literally. Oh, I mean, they uh, like challenge yeah. each other to, to uh, MMA style or whatever they're going to do. But I'm telling you, go try to find that criticism of Zuckerberg and it's not there. It's been wiped. Maybe the only person that can criticize Zuckerberg is Elon himself. Maybe there's that. I, I don't know. I mean, know. I, I've kind of gotten to where I'm starting to use Twitter more since Elon's taken it over. Um, and I've tried out that new Facebook or Meta or whatever their parent company is called Threads, which is the, you know, supposed Twitter killer. It's, it's amazing to me, and we'll get off the tech stuff here in a second, but it's amazing to me that... Not too long ago, Zuckerberg was the Antichrist in the face of most of the media, but now he's the hero for coming out with threads, which is going to kill Twitter because the media doesn't like Elon now, who was the darling of the media not all that long ago before he took over Twitter. Right. Well, I, I find myself on Twitter all the time, and, and the only reason I go to Facebook is the Facebook Marketplace. Well, I'm serious. And, well, and, and when we do this show, that's, yeah. that's it. Well, and you know, we've said it before, so we'll say it again and then we'll, we'll get on through the, the intro and all that. But uh, folks, just in case we go offline on Facebook, go find us on YouTube or go find us on Twitter because we're not going to stop the stream or anything anymore. We're going to keep right on pushing ahead or you know, if if the if you're watching on Twitter or YouTube and that stream happens to go to, go down for some reason, then find us on Facebook. And if all of it goes down, we're just going to keep on talking anyway, and we'll post it later. So, uh, pretty much, we have everything covered, I think. But we'll see. Yeah, sounds like a plan. So, uh, generally, I think before we do our little countdown, people may want to know what we're going to chat about tonight. And and I think well. I think uh, this is going to be one of those shows before you tell everybody, I think this is going to be one of those shows that for the people watching it, they're going to be enlightened. Well, not just that we have some positive news. People say that, you know, we delve in only the, the bad stuff and talking about people all the time. We actually have some good news to share on the term limits front. I mean, I guess depending on your perception, it could be, 
spell bad news for some elected officials, but <laughs> on balance, it's actually good news. It's a positive thing. I even have good things to say about Tommy tonight. Well, let's go to the break because I, I don't want us to take a chance on missing anybody to hear you say good things about Tommy. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, folks, you all know the drill. We're going to hit the little intro and um, countdown and all that. As a matter of fact, we might just skip the countdown because I need to do that. Let's just do our little intro and we'll come yeah. right back and, and come into the show. Yeah, and, and hey, let's ask a favor of everybody watching to y'all tag a friend or share it to a friend or share this on your, your page because we have been getting some reports of people not getting the notifications. Yeah. And we don't we don't know whether that's uh, you know, social media jacking with us or what, but you know, people who have asked for the notifications are not getting them. So help us out. Let's yeah. get some people informed. I'll tell you what, we'll go ahead and we'll do the full intro and, and the ads and that'll get people you know, maybe a few more minutes to find everything. And we'll, we'll be back as usual in about two and a half or three minutes. We'll, we'll play by the plan, by the, by the rule book tonight. All right, here we go. Just, you know, they feel helpless. They don't feel heard. They have nowhere to turn. In all honesty, you know, we try to lay low a little bit um, because of the fear that we would not be able to camp there. And I titled it a shot across the bow of the good old boys. Hello, everybody. I've, uh, I don't think I've ever done a video before on here, but uh, yeah, I wanted to tell y'all what frustrates me a little bit about permits. Cockroach of the week is, drum roll please, Allie Feaster Smith. We can't be apathetic about what's going on in our state. We have to all pull up our bootstraps and get on, on top of this. So you're right. There's a problem out there. I mean, and, and, and man, you can see it everywhere. Well, look, we, we have allowed government to become our wherewithal to everything. Well, I, I've not heard my name in stable or Baton Rouge in stable in the same sentence in a long time. <laughs> you're, you're about to be killed by his body. But you're gonna die in five minutes. This Bozier Watch live broadcast is brought to you by David B. Womack for all your contracting and construction needs. The Outdoor News, fishing and outdoors for our area. Acadiana Mortgage, over 23 years in the mortgage business. Pelican Training and Consulting is an IWTP customized training provider with over 25 years of success to show for it. Call them for a free consultation today. Pelican Training and Consulting matches employers with 50-plus employees with training dollars. Smarter Geek, making technology easier. And the many supporters, donations, and folks sharing information and watching out for Bozier. Now, grab your popcorn and a drink. Here we go. Well, okay. if you hear my lawnmower in the background, or actually, technically, it's my mother's lawnmower because mine's on the fritz, so I borrowed hers. I apologize, but we have to cut the yard in between the rain showers and work and all that. And, you know, if we get a thunder shower, then we can't cut part of the yard because it turns into a virtual swamp. So if you happen to hear that, it's just work in progress out there. 
Well, I, I haven't watched the comments, but I wanted to see. It looks like the only people that plan to comment in the comment sections tonight is Greg Bell and Val Baker. Well, you know, uh, Mike and Judy Dillingham said that they're watching, so we do have that comment. So, you know, some people are a little bashful, but hey, I, we got to say the uh, viewership's up tonight. It's about uh, 50 people or so, maybe more than that, including Twitter that are watching right now. So that's always good. We appreciate everybody. Well, I, I think uh, the subject matter tonight for everyone, I mean, we put it in the uh, show previews, uh, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about the Cypress District and some of that drama still out there and report on some of the work that you've done, trying to uh, get a little bit of uh, information. And then we're going to uh, hit at the uh, police jury a little bit and some of the uh, things going on up there, right? There are some shenanigans or hoarding. I'm not sure really how to put it. It, it could be hoarding or, or, I mean, look. Oh, I are, to, you, I, are you I, I saying hate, this is Bozier's version of hoarders? Is that what you're well, saying? Well, maybe, maybe so. I mean, I hate to make fun of the way anybody keeps up their house because, I mean, you come by my house sometimes and the yard's not always cut nice and neat and manicured because – Literally, we live in a river bottom over here, so I have to cut around the thunderstorms. I mean, you know, I've got boat and pickup truck and all that. In my Well, not in my yard, but in my driveway. So anyway, I hate to, you know, pass judgment upon the manner in which somebody lives in their home. But I got to say, considering whose home it is, um, it's just kind of interesting. Well, I mean, if you're if you're living, you know, you, just by virtue of living, you're going to have stuff in your yard, stuff in your house. It's going to be a mess. I mean, you, you have to clean up. You got to maintain and take care of things. But I guess when you ain't maintaining and take care of things, maybe you're not living there. Maybe, well, maybe you're not. We'll get to it here in a minute and, and don't want to reveal too much. But I guess when you're administrating lots of other things for folks, maybe you let your own stuff you know, go by the wayside a little bit. Maybe, maybe that's what it is, but we'll see here in a little bit. Cause we have well, details. I just wonder if, you know, if the, is it the, you know, which came first, the chicken or the egg, is it the administrator's fault or the administrator's administrator's fault? <laughs> it could be either. Yeah. We're playing some word salad here, guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we appreciate all the comments and everybody letting us know that they're here. Uh, Sobo live is here. Mr. Ronald J. Cheatham is also here. Uh, Thomas Shea is here. Val Baker, of course, Michael Ferris and, uh, everybody else that's watching again. Glad to have you. All right. So let's, let's start. You want to start with the good news with the term limits. Let's lead off with that. Let's lead right, off let's with something positive. Something positive. Let's not be negative. Yeah. I mean, the people of Bossier City, they, they, uh, look, there, some people say, you know what? I don't fight government because you can't win. I don't fight it. It just, there's, there's no reason. Well, well and, and look, that is true in a lot of cases. I'm not saying it is always true and, and don't get disheartened. Uh, but in a lot of cases, it can be very difficult. Yeah, no doubt. But I think in this case, I, I think this should be motivation for uh, folks that, you know what, you can step up and do some. It should be proof. I think people should use it as an example that they can make something happen. Uh, and uh, well, looky there, Colonel Crockett is in the audience uh, and he is about to be one of the stars of the show tonight positively positively a star or in positivity i don't know anyway let's uh let's jump right into it so here's what i'm going to do i'm going to hit this video it'll be there's no audio for the first couple of seconds so i'll kind of we'll do our thing pause in the video and talk on our way through it but it's kind of self-explanatory um duke do you when i hit this button do you want to go ahead and kind of set the stage for where we're headed here <clears throat> Well, we are headed into City Hall, and uh, the first stop, obviously, was uh, we went to visit Phyllis in the City Council Chambers. But Phyllis was not home, so ah. the next step was off to the mayor's office. All right, well, let's head up there and see what happens. Look at those guys walking in there. They, it's like they own the place. 
just walking right in. And I got to say, the mayor's office has a ring doorbell there. That's kind of cool. 2977. Oh, look, there's Colonel Crockett. And John Burns. John Burns is right beside him. So, folks, this is where the audio is going to pick up. And so uh, Colonel Crockett does a, a good job of kind of explaining this. So we're just going to let it roll. And we even get a, uh, get a visit from the mayor. So here we go. Good signature. Mayor, how you doing? Hey guys, how's it going? Oh, good. Hey Tommy, how good are you? Good to see you. How you doing? Nice to see you. Hey brother, Mr. Lowry. Let me take a picture doing? of that. Hello, hey, Tommy. How's it going on? Pretty good. Good to see you. We're not not live, but I am. Right, quick. So uh, oh, that's, that's okay. Uh, we did get with. We called down there to find out where Phyllis is, and she'll be back Wednesday. Okay. So yeah, that's the best place to do is to give it to her. Well, what what the reason that we wanted to talk to you about it. What happens is when we when we turn the petition in, we, we do have the number of uh, signatures required, 20, yes, 2,977 signatures that are, and I think the requirement for it to be a successful petition was 2,715. But this is the certification from the Boulder, Boulder City Registrar of Voters, and, they, and, you, and the city has 30 days after this is turned in to either pass it in an ordinance so it starts from the date that it's turned in, or not from the, it's turned in, but from the date that the registrar does it. So I don't know if you want to go ahead and have us turn it turned into Mr. Jacobs, so at least you have it. You could start looking at it and coming up with your plan, but your 30-day clock is running. So right. is that, it's dated today? That is dated today the re, uh, from the registrar. So what is, what's your choice, Mayor? Well, we talked and said that the best place to go is we, we, we called Jacobs and he said he's going to be down there to go to Phyllis down there with her. So, yeah, so. Well, I know, yeah, that's too, but I know when it goes down to Phyllis, that, you know, that day she'll, she'll let all the council members know that yeah. day. It'd be nice to get it on the agenda and talk about it. Thanks. Yeah, because you, well, it, it, they have time to do that. Yeah. Because, I mean, if, if she's in Wednesday, we got everything in by Thursday afternoon. Yeah. For the next council. For the next agenda. Yeah. But we'll, we'll send an email out to all the councilmen and let them know that what we've got and probably info them a copy of that so everybody will be informed. So when Phyllis gets it, we'll be able to run high. All right, so I'm going to pause it right there for a second. So I got to give Tommy credit. He was very receptive to it. Uh, of course, uh, I've got some pictures that I can show here in a little bit. As a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and pull those up because we'll kind of go back in time for just a moment. Let's well, see here. Well, well, while while you're pulling, you know, while you're doing that, you know, the thing is, is yeah, Tommy's going to be receptive to it because Tommy has been at odds with a council, and uh, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm on the same page on the issues with Tommy. I, I mean, I clearly I know that I'm on a different. Personally, I'm on a different page on a lot of those issues, but from his standpoint, as the mayor and trying to achieve things, you know the the council has you know been an impediment to him so he is definitely going to be in favor of this because it would enable him to have possibly if he's reelected a council that maybe he feels like he could work with that could be a good thing it could be a bad thing that's true um all right so we're stepping back in time this was back on february the 16th when we had the public you know, signing and kind of launch of the Bozier Term Limits Initiative. And so City Councilman at large, Chris Smith, was, uh, if I remember correctly, the first one to officially sign it. And so uh, we want to give him credit. And then shortly behind him, let me see if I can drag that picture in there, was Brian Hammonds. Yeah. And if I can make the pictures be still this evening. Uh, let's see who else we have here. Uh, we had... I believe the lady's name was it Mrs. Ross. Is that correct? She was representing the uh, Democratic Party in Bossier Parish. Yeah, they they showed up that day. All right, so you know, I'm, I'm by going, part, I'm, bipartisan effort. We'll put it nicely. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, okay. I'm going to be nice. So all you Democrat folks, y'all y'all might want to hold your hands over your ears because I'm not going to be nice. That was the only help that we got. The, oh. the the Democrat Party, uh, they didn't uh, step up. They said that they were going to step up, but they didn't step up, and mm. they didn't help. And mm. call me a liar, and if they want to call me a liar, I can show them the forms with the proof of the witness signatures 
of who collected and who didn't and their promises well, fell short they didn't and happen. i gotta say is uh this is the picture of course of tommy signing it with you and colonel crockett and i gotta say you two guys did the vast majority of the footwork in all this well, we, we did a lot, but the I'm going to tell you, Colonel Crockett was a machine. Colonel Qu Crockett, uh, if he didn't get at least half, he got three quarters of the signatures. And that guy, hat tip, the the, the citizens of Bossier, you know, owe a, uh, a great deal to, to that man and the work that he put in. And I, I got to tell you, I appreciated working with him and the passion that he had for you know, just affecting change in government, you know, um, I think in the long run it is, you know, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Time will tell, but you know, like, like Colonel Crockett, there was a lot of folks that, that did step up, uh, John Burns, you know, Ryan Haygood, Ryan yeah. Haygood got out and, and walked and collected a lot of signatures. My wife, my kids, you, Rex. I mean, well, I did one eight, one evening, but I got to say this: even the evening, couple hours that you and I walked the neighborhood down there in South Bossier, um, I mean, it's a lot of walking, and it is a lot of work to get all those signatures. And you know, uh, like you said, and Colonel Crockett, you're absolutely correct; it was a team effort. But uh, you guys did the vast majority of the legwork. Um, did have a little help from others, so. Uh, shout out to all of y'all. Speaking of um, speaking of you and your wife, I've got and a it's, picture. And it's, you may not have seen this one. Ooh, <laughs> look at that! Boy, she dresses me up, doesn't she? See, I'm trying to get you some brownie <laughs> points tonight, Duke. <laughs> you definitely married up, no doubt about it. I, I did do that. I did do that. Well, um, it, also, it, it, oh, go ahead. Oh, I just I, go ahead. I was just going to say it's no small feat uh, doing this thing. There is a uh, a lot of uh, there is a lot of uh, little details when you do a petition like this that you 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 don't know about, especially with the signatures. You know, for example, I mean, we had kind of calculated a a loss percentage of signatures that we would have, but you know, we had like we ended up the final number was twenty nine hundred and seventy something. And, you know, we actually had, I think, right at 3,400 total signatures. So we had a 400 and something signature loss. And it's not, you know, in, in a lot of cases, it was people who were registered to vote, but they allowed their voter registration to lapse, you know, little things like that. Yeah, various uh, things can happen and, and cause them to be removed from the official record. But we appreciate everybody that did sign up. Uh, you know, and, and took the time out of their evenings or whatever to uh, to actually sign the petition. All right. And so I'm showing a couple more pictures. There's, uh, of course, Barry Butler uh, and Senator Robert Mills, who's been getting some not so nice press lately from the good old boys. That's a whole other discussion. Uh, but Robert Mills did sign. was a stand up guy, said he would sign it and did come out and sign it. So that was that was always good. Now. Now, I can't remember if Robert lived in the city or if he didn't, but, you know, that that is another twist to this mm. term limits thing, because, you know, it originally started in the Bossier Parish Republican Party. And, you know, Robert Wright, I see Robert in the comments. Robert was in favor of it. Um, you know, it Barry, as, it, that's where it started. And when this thing started, we were seeking term limits for the city and for the police jury so this is only part of the job there is a second step you know or to to or a second leg of this journey here to now the, now the leg of the police jury journey is a little bit different and, and we have to go about it a little bit different way and we don't have a time limit you know like we had on the city uh right. term limit agenda and yeah, and we still do the the website is still live. I'm actually going to update it um, after the show in the you know coming days or next week or so. But we do still have a digital pe petition uh, for the police jury that, just to be clear, is not an official signing document or anything that will be accepted by the police jury, but it is just indicating your support for term limits for the police jury and other elected f officials, for that matter. Uh, that's going to probably take some legislative action to uh, 
to bring forth. So anyway, we'll we'll talk about that some more as, as time goes on. All right, let me switch back over to the video, and I may have to fast forward it. Let me see if it held our position here. Uh, of course not. All right, so let me fast <laughs> forward. Do, 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 do. All right, here we go. So this is officially submitting it. Okay. Well, we went up to the mayor's office, and they suggested that turning in the petition to you would be fully acceptable. Okay. And so we didn't know that you were actually her assistant. So. Yes, I am. I'm Amy Anna. Well, I'm Dave Crockett, and this is Duke Lowry. Duke Lowry? Okay, yeah. nice to meet you guys. Yeah, so we'll show you what we're giving you. Okay. So basically, uh, we have – Duke, I didn't mean to walk in front of you. Uh, this is a cover letter with uh, Duke and my signature – that shows what the propositions are, and it gives a summary of what's in the city charter for how to do a term limits petition or a petition in general. And this is a certification for uh, from the registrar. And so what it does is it basically starts the 30-day clock that the city has to either approve this outright or then they have 90 days. They have 90 days total to add it to the ballot for the next election that's coming up. So. Okay. What we're doing is we'll turn it all in and leave it for you. And if you want to call Mr. Jacobs and hand it over to him to look at anything, whatever your procedures are, we're okay. kind of, we've done our work. Okay. I sure will do that. Um, on Wednesday, um, Ms. Phyllis will be back. Right. And I'm sure she'll get the ball rolling for There us. you go. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. Thank You're you. welcome. And it's nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet Take you. Take care. Thank you. I would say she was real cheerful. She was. She was. So. What I would say, I, I want to just add something else to the uh, citizens of Bozier. Here, here, here's what this means. So nobody in uh, that I know of or have heard of in the city of Bozier have ever exercised the provision within the Bozier City Charter to petition, you know, to make an amendment to the charter. Or, you know, nobody's ever done it. So this is the first time. Um, it it has happened so now the council has the option to adopt it or if they don't adopt it then it goes to uh they have to call an election you know as the colonel you know explained within 90 days <clears throat> so i don't know i mean it's speculation as to how the councilman would view uh, and how they would vote on this so I think that's a little bit of an interesting debate for everyone and, and to kind of think about. And if you're in Bozier City, maybe you could have the discussion with your councilman. Um, 33% or in excess of 33% of the electorate in which if we had more time, we could have collected a whole heck of a lot more signatures, no doubt. But, you know, obviously Chris Smith and Brian Hammond signed it. They're going to, you know, be in support of it. but Vince Maggio, he didn't sign it. David Montgomery, he didn't sign it. Bubba Williams didn't sign it. Darby didn't sign it. And Jeff Free didn't sign it. Mm, and they were all notified and knew about it, correct? They, they all knew about it. So, okay. you know, it stands mm. to reason that those individuals are opposed to term limits. I, I'm guessing. Maybe they are. I don't know. I'm, I'm saying they are. But of all of those, you know, the consequences here is that the only one that this this term limits thing wouldn't affect would be Vince Maggio. You know, Bubba, Darby, Free, and Montgomery, I mean, it would affect them. They would be done. So, well, yeah, and let's pause right there for a second because Proposition 1 – uh, of that petition is shall term limits apply to all Bossier city councilmen, councilwomen district and at large where no person shall be eligible for election to the office for more than three terms. And that said term limits shall apply to all who have held the office past and present. So that means immediately they would be term limited, term limited. Correct. Uh, that's correct. And hey, I want to point out, I did just see a, a post. Uh, I didn't mention Shane Cheatham. Shane did, he he got a bunch of signatures as well, too. Um, you know. Yeah, I didn't mean to leave you well, out, Shane. Yeah, sorry, Shane. It's been a long day. It's been hot. 
you know, working in the rain, it, you know. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, just had. <laughs> yeah, that just reminded me, uh, I had a picture and I had it ready of Shane signing the petition and I didn't put it up there. As a matter of fact, I think he had just donated blood or something that day. I can't remember. But anyway, uh, but Shane and, did sign the petition too on the launch day back in February. Yeah. And it, and if you, you helped out and got some signatures and I didn't give you credit, you know, my apologies, it wasn't intentional. The only, the only ones that I intentionally pointed out were the ones that said they were going to help and didn't. Um, All right. Now, <laughs> Interestingly, it also applies to the mayor, correct? That's right. It, and and not necessarily, and, and when we're, we're talking about, you know, the, the councilmen and the mayors, we're not talking about all of these people really individually, um, but it, this is any of the council seats as well as the mayor's, you know, that, that, that office. Um, but as it relates to Tommy Chandler, um, it would ultimately affect affect him, but it doesn't affect him immediately in the short term. This is retro, meaning that, you know, if you've already served three terms, you know, you're done. You're no longer qualified to run for that office. So, for example, um, we'll use Mayor Walker. If Mayor Walker wanted to come back and challenge Tommy, he couldn't because he's term limited. He, he had already been in there for 12 years. Very interesting. All right. So what is, and you may have already mentioned this, but it, you know, it's, it's not super complicated, but there's a few little twists and turns to this. So what is the next step from here? The city council, you know, has the, the petition and the signatures and it's been certified by Stephanie's office. As a matter of fact, uh, this is the certification letter from Stephanie Agee's office. Uh, so that it is official with the correct number of signatures, actually more than enough. But what is the next step from here? What does the city council do from here? Well, the the next step I would uh, imagine is going to be that, you know, it's going to have to be put on the agenda at the council meeting. And, you know, they're going to have to, you know, at that point uh, make a motion to adopt or not. And if they vote it down, then according to the charter, no matter what, they've got to send it to a vote of the people. And if it, they know as well as anybody else, if it goes to a vote of the people, it's going to, I mean, it's going to pass. They know that. So the question becomes whether or not they choose to send it to the people and, you know, waste the taxpayers' dollars or not. They may say, well, how can you know that? I mean, how can you know it'd be a waste? The people may vote it down. <laughs> well, they might, knocked, but aren't, aren't the stats something like... Of these, yeah, I knocked on a lot of these doors. It's going to pass. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, the, the like the national stats are something on the order of 70 or 80% of people support term limits, you know, and all that. So it stands to reason that in one of the most conservative parishes, even though this is a bipartisan thing, that and, it would pass with flying colors. Rex, and I want to stop you right there. It doesn't matter, conservative, libertarian, you know, look, I would almost contend there were more Democrats signed our petition, you know, or, or people, you know, of a, a, a liberal philosophy signed our petition than maybe conservative folks. And the, the, the intriguing thing to me, and I, I know Colonel Crockett will attest to this, we heard the same thing at every door, regardless of who you talk to. They were all sick of government. And overwhelmingly, there's a funny thing to this. Almost every door, they're like, I wish we could get this in Washington. Every Everybody. They were all saying it. Libertarians alike. Right. And, uh, and then, but then there was a couple of people that were really genius. They were really genius. As we explained it to them and how this worked, they said, so they said, so let me get this straight. You're telling me that if I wanted to get a petition together here in Bossier to legalize smoking weed, if I could get 2,700 signatures, I can make it legal in Bossier? <laughs> well, something about that state and federal law superseding, but there's a lot of gray area there now. So I guess the answer will be yes. I I just, I got to tell you, I had a big old chuckle out of that one. <laughs> All right. So the good news is 
2,977 signatures were accepted and certified. That was more than enough. Only had to get 2,715. So it's obvious that people are interested in this. This could potentially change the dynamics of Bossier politics for many years to come. Is that a fair assessment? Okay, think about this, folks. I mean, there's, you know, about 75 to 80-something people total watching the show here. Um, when this goes into effect, and, and I, 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 don't, I don't think that it's, uh, I, I don't think there's any way out of this. I think it goes into effect. I, think it, I don't think they, they can escape it. Um, so what this would automatically do, you're only going to have three councilmen that can return to the council. Chris Smith, Brian Hammonds, and Vince Maggio. That's hmm. it. So you're going to have four vacancies right out of the gate. Hmm. Very interesting. So it's definitely, um, whether it passes by, you know, by uh, the city council passing it or whether it passes by going to the ballot box, it's absolutely going to change the dynamics of uh, Bozier politics. No doubt about it. Without a doubt. Without All a right. doubt. No so I would be remiss. Uh, hold on just a second here because I failed to do it. I am going to, let's see, let me drag and drop that. And let's uh, hit publish. And there we go. There, see, Shane did sign it. I, I had his picture ready and I just failed to drop it in. Sorry, Shane. He did. He did. He did sign it. He was, you know, one of the guys that spearheaded it. Or, or help spearhead it anyway. So, all right. Enough about term limits, unless y'all have some more questions. And we uh, uh, we appreciate all the commentary. Mike Collier says it is more than obvious that term limits will pass by the people. No doubt. All right. What is next on our uh, agenda to talk about? Shall we talk about a little lawyer billing? You know, that won't take a long, long time because it's pretty simple. It's right. lawyers just bill for whatever they want to bill. Yes, they, they just get to do whatever right. they want, That pretty as, much. As long as they can keep billing, that's the main thing. All right, so let me switch screens. Won't take but just a second here. Let's see. I think people are going to find this offensive. I, I do, because I got to tell you that, you know, I, when you were you were doing these requests and I was seeing the responses coming back by email and I, I was looking at them. I mean, I didn't say nothing to you, but I was looking at them. I got to tell you, it it disgusted me. It Well, I hate to say it, but I not that I'm a soothsayer. I knew what the response was gonna be because I've been down this path before. All right, so let me let me set this up live and it, it is kind of, you're right. I mean, there's no better way to put it than it's kind of disgusting. So here is the official public information request, which, according to the Cypress District, needs to go to Shelley. She's the really nice um, secretary. I don't know what her official title is, uh, but she's the one that takes the minutes and records the meetings as well. And she's always been very helpful. But, of course, she forwards all these to guess who? The Ayers Law Firm. So every time you make a public information request to the Cypress District, or, or we do, it literally costs us more taxpayer money that goes to the Caddo Parish law firm of Ayers, Shelton, and, you know, whatever the rest of their name is. All right, but here it is. So uh, we requested a detailed itemized record or summary of all legal expenses and billing incurred by the Cypress District in the case of Robert Berry and the Bossier Parish District Attorney. Uh, same deal with the Louisiana Attorney General, and same deal because there's been some movement with the Louisiana Board of Ethics, a detailed itemized summary or, or summary of all legal expenses between Robert Berry and the Louisiana Board of Ethics. Well, um, so, so you're, you're wanting to know, I mean, the hours for a paralegal, the hours for one attorney or two attorneys or three attorneys, what what is in, what is Robert Barry costing in these lawsuits? It's pretty many, simple. How many people watching the show have had to have an attorney and had you know you've been billed for their services? I mean, I'm not I'm not saying attorneys 
shouldn't yeah, ba- be uh, bill sh- not saying right. that at all right but how many of you how many of you you know you 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 get your bill and you you don't ask any questions you don't you know know what you're paying for i mean the little bit that I've had to deal with attorneys and all that, no different than when I do tech stuff for people and they ask, you know, okay, what's this charge for and, and all that. I'm more than happy to itemize that out or discuss it with them. And I do the same thing for whether it's an attorney or a plumber or anybody else that I hire. You know, attorneys are not gods. They're other people that you Whoa. hire to do services. Whoa, hang on a minute. Wait a minute. You said attorneys are not gods. I mean, we're in Bozier Parish, Rex. Well, okay. May, they may think they're gods. Okay. Something about that's, golden cows and false idols, or I don't know. But anyway. That's more like it. That's more like because I'm going to tell you, I know a lot of them. They dang sure think they're gods and goddesses. Now, I will say that there is a maximum per hour rate that they can bill, according to the Attorney General. And I forget, but I want to say it's around 175 to 185 an hour. So it's less than what their normal billing rate is. And then there's also a specified amount. I may be incorrect in in that number, but I'm pretty close, I think. And then there's also a reduced amount for paralegal billing, so on and so forth, that they can do per the attorney general. Uh, Okay, well, I appreciate that. You're probably right, the number. We we don't have to be exact on it. So anyway, here's the million-dollar question, Rex. Mm -hmm. So how many hours for the attorney and how many hours for the paralegal did they bill the Cypress District? You want to want to venture a wild guess? I don't know. Any of our viewers, do y'all want to guess how many hours, you know, Ayers Law Firm is billing the Cypress District? How how many? Any, Molly, any Jackson, Molly Jackson Burtz has always asked because they always have a BS answer. Well, you're fixing to be, <laughs> I, I, it's going to be a toss up between dazzled with brilliance or baffled with BS. I'll let y'all make the, make the call on that. Uh, let's see. Greg Bell says, uh, not with family law. They go up to $300 in a heartbeat. Renee says, I think it's 185. I, th- I think you're correct, Renee. All right. So drum roll, please. Here is the official response. Rex and Duke. Let me, let me enlarge this a little bit. Blah, 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 blah. By way of explanation, the legal services provided by our firm are not broken down and or invoiced by the individual matters set forth in your request. Instead, our firm invoices and bills the district on a monthly basis for all legal services provided. In other words, they just bill them for whatever and nobody questions anything. Okay, so how many hours? Well, I don't know. They didn't say. Well, what do you mean they didn't say? Well, they didn't say I, at all. You you see all that. It's well, either dazzlingly we... brilliant or bafflingly full of bullshit. And I'll let you well, make the call. So, so wait a minute. They just send the bill over and we just pay it. I guess so. Now, Julie Ferris says, so they are on retainer. Well, maybe so. It's probably a pretty big retainer. Matter of fact, rather large retainer compared to what they usually bill because we've published the numbers before. And, uh, you know, I'll give uh, Shelly credit. She's very forthcoming in getting the financials over to us, uh, you know, in a pretty timely manner usually. And, you know, the heirs law firm usually makes 200, between 200 and $300,000 a year of your taxpayer dollars. Literally, Duke, you and the other property owners around the lake, y'all are just paying for the lawyers. Well, well, I'm not the only one freaking everybody in this parish, 80 something percent or whatever, are paying it too. It's not just me. Well, true, but I'm, I'm but paying the property, more though. But the yeah. property owner fees amount to around 250 ish, $300,000 a year in revenue for the Cypress District. Y'all are literally, you know, by paying those fees, in essence, paying the heirs. Well, you can look at it that way, but I prefer to think that, you know, my landowner fees are paying for Robert Berry to be able to manage all the cabins over there when the park shut down after hours. Because it's not to managing the no wake zone buoys on Black Bayou, because frankly, I've never seen Robert Berry on Black Bayou Lake. I, I don't know why they call it Cypress Black Bayou. They should just call it Cypress Park 
you know, the domain or the kingdom of Robert Berry is what they should call it or some crap like that. <laughs> D.D. White Clark's <laughs> the kingdom. D.D. White Clark says having them on retainer is one thing. However, services rendered should be item, itemized. That's fraudulent, in my opinion, to not itemize services. Well, here's the irony of that, D.D. You would have to sue them to prove that. And guess what? They're going to build to defend themselves in the district. I mean, they've literally got a cash cow sitting there. That's what we've been screaming to the top of the rafters for for the past several years. And, Us and, and a lot of other folks. And to all of you watching, who do y'all think has been enabling all of this? Who, who lets this go on? They have a lawyer on the commission now. On the district committee. Kelly Long, she's a lawyer. And she lets all these shenanigans go on. Oh, wait a minute. You're talking about the lawyer who has a suite with a judge in Benton, right? Out, oh. at, the race, out at the racetrack? Well, that's what we've heard. Oh, that's that's right. Oh, and wait a minute. Who else is on the board? Oh, oh, mm. we've got... Uh, wait you talking about Mr. Timid or, Walt Bigby, or we're we talking about the jackass Gary Weish? Well... I'm just full of names. I wasn't going to go on the jackass, but I was going to talk about, you know, uh, I mean, he maybe he's bucking for his own statue. I don't know. There's no time. Well, they should just put Lee Ayers and Alex Vazella on the commission and be done with it. To my bride, I want to correct you. You said the board lets it go on. No, the police jury, everyone who appoints these folks out here to that board, they're the ones that allow this to go on. In the case of the city of Bossier, you know, that would be none other than Queen David has enabled his best friend or friend, Walt Bigby, to be on that board to allow the activities that have took place out there. The, to the residents of Benton, you're not off the hook. You have an appointee out there. Your mayor and your city council out there appointed Gary White. They have enabled this out to go on out there. And the, the most egregious one of all is the police jury. The police jury is the most egregious one. Robert Berry himself, the dual office holder, which now they're thumbing the nose at the Supreme Court saying, oh, screw you. We're just going to truck right along and, you know, we're going to write a letter to the police jury to reappoint him. Yeah. And we'll see how, by the way, uh, I think everybody, Renee, you can correct me, but uh, I think all the resumes or whatever, the people wanting to, you know, that are clamoring to get Robert Barry's job out there had to have their resumes or whatever applications in, or I don't know, whatever by July the 1st, I think. So it'll be interesting to see when the, um, Police jury makes a decision on that. Maybe the next meeting, which would be what a week from today. Hmm, that could be yeah. interesting. I I don't know, but you know, you folks need to realize that you know a lot of your elected officials that you have today have enabled, have known and enabled all of the things that are taking place, you know, and coming to light, especially at the Cypress District, and that's just one example. And the police jury, in my opinion is you know uh, they own the most responsibility of it oh yeah there, there's no doubt we've been screaming to the rooftops about this y'all y'all know that you watch the show um we've been sending out emails letters so have a lot of other people as well and folks that live around the lake folks that don't live around the lake i mean they all know what's going on they just turn a blind eye all right but you, but you know rex look this is just one place where i mean that you know, the police juries dropped the ball and not done the public's work, you know, as one, uh, is it police? How do you say when it's a female police juror? Juror. Juror. How, how you, juror. No, no yeah. as a, as a female, it's got to be a female police say. juror. Okay. Well, female police juror. Yeah. Let's just say, well, well you know, as she told me, I'm not going to talk about my friends. I'm not going to, well, you know, I, I thought you served the public. I didn't know that you served your, you know, compadres, you know, in, in an elected capacity. I mean, I, I thought you were elected to serve the public and, you know, it's one thing on the Cypress district to say, Hey, you didn't know. And, you know, I would contend that, you know, we, they, they've enabled breaking the law, 
But what about some others? I mean, is, are, are we just being, you know, picky here, Rex? I mean, just are, are we crossing the line? Is there more maybe out there? You mean more stuff involving the police jury? Yeah. I mean, come well, on. Sure. We can just skip right over to another lake, Lake Bistano, as a matter of fact. Did you know oh. that there is some controversy going on at Lake Bistano, and it's not Bigfoot? I did not it's know. Not, it's Jeez. not giant Salvinia either. That, not kidding. just weed, no. Although this, oddly enough, does have some kind of weeds growing up around it, what we're fixing to show here. But, oh, wait a minute. Is there, is there a gate? There is a gate involved. Oh, so it's this is something going on in a gated community. So people are definitely, if it's a gated community, somebody's going to have their panties in a wad. Well, I don't know about community, but anyway, so that what brings us. Of, <laughs> what kind of gated community do they have out there on Bistano? I mean, I grew up out there. I don't remember that. I didn't say it was a gated community. Uh... Although the person that lives there, I guess you could say is a community servant of some of sorts, but it's just up in the air whether it's Caddo Parish or Bossier Parish. I don't know. I got to ask, well, what, what public servant are we talking about in a gated community on Lake Bissano? Well, it would be none other than Mr. Butch Ford. Now, we've talked about Butch Ford before. There's been a lot of reporting uh, about Butch Ford. As a matter of fact, our friend, Jeff Sadow, just published an article. Thank you. Uh, we're, we're happy to send you that information, Jeff. So we appreciate you getting the word out there. Um, and he's been on Butch Ford's rear end as well as several others. Um, but yeah, we got to talk about Butch again. Yeah. So let, let's, let's, uh, let's rewind here a little bit. So the deal was, was he lived in Caddo Parish and he had homestead exemption there and he voted in Caddo Parish like pretty much all of his life, right? Wasn't that the case? I think, as I remember, yes. And then when the parish administrator uh, position came available, uh, uh oh, I done triggered somebody. Oh, that was oh, fast. Yeah, that didn't take long. So <laughs> when the uh, parish administrator thing came along, um, had to be a resident of Bossier Parish to be able to, I, I think that's in the state law. Well, I, as best I can recollect it is, and, and from reading and digging into this, but what was the problem with that? I mean, uh, wasn't Butch, well, the, well, he the was the only guy that the police jury was worried about being administrator. Why can't they just appoint him administrator? What the yeah, heck well, with the law? Well, yeah, so our, our numbers around 100 folks watching now. I'm wondering, surely out of 100 people watching this show right now, Surely one of y'all submitted an application to be the parish administrator. Surely did didn't y'all did didn't somebody see the advertisement for the opening? Did anybody see it and submit an application? Let's see. Where is that? Do I have that little yeah, I got that sound effect. Hold on. Oh, that's crickets chirping. Oh, that's right. I I'm sorry. False alarm here. That's right. There was no advertisement. Nobody even got a chance to apply for that position. It was going to be none other than one person. Now, surely, surely, Rex, surely the police jury, I mean, you know, they, they get accused. We've accused them of being lawless. I mean, Jeff Sadow even said they were lawless. I mean, surely, I mean, and they've got an attorney on there. I mean, you know. Oh, yeah. What's her name? Juliana something. Juliana Parks. Oh, her husband's yeah. like a judge, too. I mean, you said earlier, I mean, they like they're gods, right? Well, the attorneys, they, they are. The attorneys are gods. Surely, surely she would have followed the law and checked that he met the qualifications. I mean, remember the little library lady? And, you know, what oh, was yeah. her name? Miss Logan? Yeah, the they picked the on law. the library lady. That's we right. follow the law here. You know, they the always the follow the law. Yeah. When, who said that? Was it Doug Rimmer that said that? No, I think it was the, yeah, that's right. It was Doug Rimmer. I think it was, it was Doug Rimmer. Rimmer. Our old yeah. friend, tax man, Doug Rimmer. They always follow the law. And look, it, I mean, they've got an attorney right there from the DA's office, Patrick Jackson. I mean, he's so brilliant. 
he all, he needs to check and, and make sure that the attorney general is not wrong. Uh, yeah, we got to see if the attorney general is correct or incorrect. So yeah. we filed a lawsuit up here. And, right. Oh, we didn't invite the attorney general to play along with us, but he found out about it and he showed up. And ultimately, guess what? The Louisiana Supreme Court, the highest uh, law in Louisiana, said, you know what? I might want to pretty- rethink that, boys. Yeah, you might want to rethink that. But 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 they had an attorney on the council. Surely she, you know, looked out after her constituents to make sure we were following the law. Surely she considered that, right? Well, are you talking about your good friend Juliana Parks, who was also on the uh, Republican Executive Committee, as a matter of fact? I mean, yeah. Where do we go from here? I mean, we, we've talked about this. We've reported on this kind of stuff. And nobody, either they don't take notice of it, they don't think anybody cares. I don't know what the whole deal is. But apparently it is a bunch of lawlessness going on. Well, I mean, and, and I don't, I don't, I hate it. I, I like I mean, I saw one of the police jurymen at breakfast the other morning. He came over, was nice, shook my hand, and and I appreciated him being nice. You know, I don't know a lot of times whether they're going to come over and break my jaw or what. <laughs> but, you know, the, the truth of the matter is, is, you know, why did you do this? Why are you allowing lawlessness? And in this particular case, you know, th- I think this goes beyond lawlessness here. Um, well, I, if... You want to ex- well, Explain why I'm saying that. I mean, I think that was where you were fixing to go. Yeah, so here's the deal. We got a Proton Mail tip, got a message that uh, we needed to look a little further into Butch Ford. That, you know, as Ricky Ricardo said, I uh, got some explaining to do, that some things weren't adding up. And I think some other people may have mentioned it, but it didn't really go anywhere because everybody assumed that, you know, uh, Butch Ford fixed the situation. I mean, you're right. Jeff Saddle did some reporting on it. He even called into question Stephanie Agee in the Registrar of Voters Office because I think legally she was supposed to call him in and question, you know, whether he was supposed to be voting in Bossier Parish because of his homestead exemption and, and all that that was going on anyway. And so it just kind of rocked along there and rocked along there. Well, fast forward, we get a message uh, recently. Uh, it was about July. Heck, I think it was, may have been, it was the first part of July, right before July the 4th. Anyway, that we need to check into this and might need to send an information request over to the tax assessor's office because there's some more shenanigans going on. And so we did send a public information request over to the tax assessor's office. And to their credit, they were very responsive. Uh, and you know, it was shortly after the fourth or whatever, they sent this information over. And so here we go. So this isn't our innuendo. I mean, we're going to put, you know, give our opinion on all this as well, but these are the facts as they stand right now. So right here on page one, we see the tax assessment report and we see it's for Joe Edward Ford Jr., Butch Ford and his wife, Sally. Uh, showing a physical address of 1255 Parish Camp Road in Elm Grove, which is Elm Grove, which is right down there by Bistino. And it shows the assessed value and blah, 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 and the legal description of it and all that. Not a big deal, right? Nothing wrong with that so far. Seems legit. Seems legit. So now we move into the next part of this, which is the... Um, well, whatever you call the official document here. But anyway, property description. And notice right here, I've highlighted in yellow, do you reside on the property described above, which is that same property that they're claiming the uh, homestead exemption, which is out at Lake Bistano. And the checkbox is yes. And it is signed by Butch Ford here. All right? So, Okay. You know, I'm greatly simplifying it, but he got caught with a cattle residence and all that. Okay, so they bought some property or acquired some property and acquired a house out at Bistano and moved over there, right? Nothing wrong with that. He's trying to fix the situation and not be as lawless as he had been in the past, correct? 
I mean, that's what you would think. That, that's what you think. I mean, he's he's trying to rectify the wrong, so he's moving from Caddo, moving to Bozier on a piece of property that they owned, apparently. Okay, so here we go. And you can go look this up on, you know, Google Maps or whatever. All right, let's move on down. Hmm. Hmm. Now we run into a little bit of trouble here. So this is a letter from the tax assessor's office, Bobby Edmonston's office, on May the 16th of this year. All right. To Butch Ford and his wife, Sally, uh, you know, in reference to their homestead exemption at 1255 Parish Camp Road. It says, Dear Mr. and Mrs. Ford, for those of you that are listening to the podcast, I'll, I'll read it. Uh, for the past several weeks, our office has been conducting our annual review of homestead exemptions. I had no idea that they reviewed homestead exemption status. During this review, it was discovered that you do not appear to reside at the residence you are claiming homestead exemption. Uh-oh. The Louisiana Constitution sets out the guidelines for receiving a homestead exemption in Article 7, Section 20. And even more interesting, the next paragraph says, We will be removing the homestead exemption on June the 5th of 2023 for the tax year 2023. Since the homestead was just applied for in late 2022, we will also be removing the homestead exemption for tax year 2022 through a change order with the tax commission. This will generate a new tax bill for tax year 2022. <laughs> this is where they start a tit for tat here. Should you believe that you do indeed qualify for the homestead exemption for the stated property, you have from the receipt of this letter until the date stated above to prove your claim. If your case has not been resolved by that date, the homestead exemption will be removed. At that time, we will also notify any state and local governing authorities that may apply. Now, now wait, before you move on, scroll back up. Mm -hmm. The very first sentence mm -hmm. for the past several weeks. 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 Not like they went out there one day and Butch and Sally weren't home and they said, oh, well, they don't, must not live here. I don't, by reading this, I don't think that's the case. So you caught that too. Okay, yes. keep going. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, so that, let's see, that, that letter was, because I don't have the notes in front of me, that letter was May the 16th. So May the 31st, a letter from Butch Ford to the assessor's office. Uh, Dear Bozier Parish Assessor, blah, blah, blah. I hope this letter finds you well. <laughs> I understand. I'm writing this letter in connection to my domicile and homestead status. As you know, I am a professional engineer registered in Bozier Parish. Oh, well, that must mean that he lives in Bozier Parish. He's a registered engineer in Bozier Parish, as if that really actually matters for this. I've been a resident six since October 22nd of 2022 and property owner in Bossier Parish since 1986. And as such, I am entitled <laughs> to the homestead exemption under Louisiana law. Entitled. Entitled. That's hmm. interesting that he would say he's entitled. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Maybe one All of the right. gods up there has told him, hey, look, you're entitled. Right. Now, Val Baker in the comments says he lives at his daddy's house. Well, interesting you should say that, Val. We'll let you make that judgment call after we get through with this paperwork here. Hmm. All right. So back to the letter. Um, Butch Ford says, I understand, second paragraph, I understand from your letter that it is an effort by your office to remove my homestead exemption in Bossier Parish. Given the facts of my case, such actions would contradict relevant Louisiana laws and statutes that outline the qualifications for homestead exemption. Hmm. In accordance with constant Louisiana Constitution Article, what is that, 7, Section 20, a homeowner is entitled to homestead exemption if the property is their permanent residence. All right, y'all make a mental note of that. Permanent residence. Further, the Louisiana Civil Code Article 42 outlines the law of domicile in Louisiana, stating the domicile of an individual is his principal establishment. Hmm. Going to highlight that there, too, as well. 
I have made clear, I have made clear declarations and demonstrated action supporting my domicile in Bossier Parish. These are as follows. Bullet point number one. I reside at this property in Bossier Parish and maintain no other primary residence out of this parish, outside of this parish. Now, I've highlighted that because that's the most important. The rest of us just fluff and BS. Well, Rex, I'm sitting here reading this and I'm listening to you read it. And, and I'm saying to myself, okay, so you got the tax assessor that's revoking his claimed homestead exemption. I mean, which is no small thing. And you've got the parish administrator saying, hey, this is my residence. I am domiciled here. Uh, you know, you need to acknowledge it. So I'm just, I'm just saying you got, you got two folks here. Who do you believe? Do you believe the guy that took the job that had to know? You, you can't make me believe that he didn't know. And you can't make me believe that the, the police jury and their godly attorneys didn't know that it's required for you to be a resident of Bossier Parish, but he wasn't when they made him the parish administrator. I mean, so who do you believe? Do you believe the tax assessor or do you believe the parish administrator? Well, Just on that alone. So uh, our good friend and former police juror, Barry <laughs> Butler says, Patrick probably wrote the letter. <laughs> Molly Jackson's asking, is he the owner? And we have some more information in from a uh, uh, good friend, Greg Bell says in September of 2001, his daddy and mom donated the property to Butch and Sally in 2008. He did lease the property to Ashley and energy and in 2013. He got a second mortgage on that property. So just to be clear, some, some more facts surrounding this. All right. But moving on, like I said, the rest of these bullet, bullet points, all of his professional associations for his professional engineering license, registered, you know, register my Bossier Parish address as my address of record. That doesn't matter. I'm no lawyer, but that doesn't matter according to the law. Well, he, so, took a, he, he took a second mortgage on the property. I mean, surely that means he lives there. Well, <laughs> Page two, or the next page of that letter. So in light of these circumstances, I have executed, this is great. I have executed a declaration of domicile affirming my intent to maintain Bossier Parish as my principal and permanent establishment. This declaration has been filed with the clerk of court's office in Bossier Parish and is now a matter of public record. That's right, folks. You can request that from the clerk of courts or go on the clerk connect and pay the fee and get the record. So, so you're telling me that the parish administrator went a step further, made a declaration, an official filed an official document in the, in the courthouse records for all the world to see saying I'm living here. And then you're also telling me that the tax assessor is saying you don't live here. I'm not telling you. I'm literally showing you. Yes, it's, you are it, correct. I mean, doesn't that, I, I, I'm, I hate to use the word here. Anybody watching the show? I mean, but does it not sound like a fraud to you? Well, look, here's what we're going by. This is a public information request to the tax, or, tax assessor's office. These are official documents, you know, or copies of the official documents. We're not making this up. You know, this isn't just some Joe Blow sent it to us. We got a notice of it, uh, you know, a message about it, and sent the information request in. We're literally, I mean, we're ad-libbing a little bit here, but we're literally reading from Butch Ford's signed document that is filed at the clerk of court's office in Bossier Parish. So so he said he he lives in the parish, filed his homestead exemption. Okay, and then everybody's happy. It's going away, which which even back then we talked about it. we uh, thought it was shady. Sadow even talked about it. He he thought it was sketchy. But then apparently the 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 tax assessor actually investigated, determined 
that, wait a minute, no, you're not living there after weeks of investigation. And then Butch Ford doubles down after this. And double Dick, dog dare you, Bobby. Show me the proof that I ain't living there. Double dog dare you. <laughs> double dog. Because look, it says right here, the, the next paragraph, given these facts and the absence of any contrary evidence. In other words, all right, Bobby, show your cards. <laughs> I kindly request your office to acknowledge my domicile status in Bossier Parish because he literally said he was entitled to it, right? and discontinue any efforts to remove my homestead exen exemption. How dare you try to remove my homestead exemption? I said that I live there. I'm a registered engineer, and I have my mail sent to that address. That makes it my residence, domicile, whatever. Bobby apparently did not get the memo that he's entitled. He, Bobby, I, just, I they, not. they got his email spelled wrong or something. He just didn't get it, apparently. Now, hold, hold on. Not only did he double dog dare him, he triple dog dares him because in the next paragraph, <laughs> in accordance with Louisiana Civil Code Article 44, which outlines a challenge to domicile, I request your office, if you believe otherwise, to provide evidence to the contrary. If no such evidence is provided, I trust this matter will be promptly well, resolved in my favor as a good old boy. Good for, good for Butch. He called him out. So That's right. So what play, happened? play the good old boy card. He called him out. You, you, you call <laughs> the tax assessor out. You call him out. All right. Yeah. So we'll start the drum roll here in just a second. This is a copy of the Declaration of Domicile. I've highlighted that, again, Butch says, well, number one, he's of sound mind and legal age. That might be a little debatable right now in light of this. But he says, my permanent and primary residence is 1255 Parish Camp Road, Elm Grove, Louisiana. And I intend to continue it indefinitely as my permanent and principal home. I have lived at the above described location since October 21st of 2022. And then the rest of it, some, you know, fluff. All right. So June 7th, Bobby responds. Unfortunately, it does not constitute proof that you are indeed occupying the above property. That's pretty much it. As stated, the homestead exemption will be removed from the property. <laughs> yeah, okay. Have a nice day. Um, Have a nice day. Thanks for playing. Okay. So, here we go. June 13th, Butch sends a letter back. Dear Mr. Edmonston, I received your denial of my homestead exemption. Please provide all the facts and law upon which you base your decision. If there is some other process which I have failed to follow... I would, well, I don't want to give it away just yet. I would, there's definitely a process he failed to follow. We'll get to that in a moment. All right. To appeal your findings with your office, please notify me immediately. <laughs> June 19th, Bobby's office sends an email to Jeffrey Gilmore at the Secretary of State um, as expl uh, and says, uh, as I've explained, we have removed the homestead exemption for Joe Weber Ford Jr. at 1255 Parish Camp Road, Elm Grove, Louisiana. Attached are the following, the stuff that we just went through. Call if you have any questions. Bobby Edmonston. And here we go, folks. All right. So I want everybody watching. These are the pictures from the tax assessor's office. And I want you to look at these pictures. And look at the dates on these pictures and tell me what you think. Is Butch correct or is Bobby's office correct? Is the tax assessor's office correct? Here we go. So here is a picture, obviously, you know, through, uh, through the window. It's dated May the 4th of 2023. Man, now, I, I can tell you right now, ain't nobody living there. You know why? Why? Look at them deer. What they're not on the wall? Maybe, maybe he was no. rearranging. Maybe they no. were redecorate. Maybe they were remodeling. No, wait a minute. Look at them deer. You you telling me a parish administrator is gonna have nothing but those little low scrawny deer at his well, not just residence? not just that. I, I didn't even notice till you parish, said something. Look at the hide coming off the noses. Parish administrator ain't gonna have them little scrawny deer. He's gonna nah, have big old. Yeah. 
he's gonna have a 30 point buck hanging on his wall you you think all these contracting firms ain't gonna took him on a deer hunt Heck well no. look they've got some disinfecting wipes out there though but you know again i don't want to talk about how anybody's house you know we all need to do upkeep on our house but does this look like they're living there well, and not just that whoops let's let's go to the next picture so maybe that's the guest room well th- I mean the the tote that's that the tote in the middle of the floor that's probably so you can prop your feet up there. I mean and, and look, you never know if you're sitting in that recliner right there. You got your your fork, spoon, and knife utensil holder there on the floor. You need to keep it close just in case as you're eating your potluck lunch or whatever, you know. I don't know. Uh Molly Jackson Burt says uh, looks like he owns uh the grassy knoll circle Shreveport to me. Uh that is I think he still does actually own that. Uh, Greg Bell says, I see Sally Ford's fancy washroom. I mean, I'm just saying, is that the way they live in Ellerby? You're telling me that you're going to leave Ellerby to go and live like this? I don't know. Maybe so. Michael Ferris says, maybe that's a storage shack. Maybe it is, Michael. Maybe it is. Look, I, I don't know. I don't know that you can go from living in Ellerby, you know, out there to going and living out here on Bissonneau and living like this. I, I, I don't I don't know. I can't wrap my head around it. Can y'all? <laughs> I, I don't know. Val Baker, look, there's the answer right there. It's got must be squatters. And, and the squatters have to be living out there with Butch and Sally because they've declared that that's their primary residence. Well that's look, where I, they're living. I've got a perfect explanation. If you look right there at the left in that picture, you see the studs in the frame there. They're remodeling. They're moving things around. Yeah. Okay. Maybe so. Maybe we're just not getting a big enough picture here. Oh. Well, there's the outside of the shack. Hmm. And again, we didn't take these pictures. This is from the, the tax assessor's office. Look, so so the lawn people hadn't come and took care of business out there. Okay, well, I don't prove nothing. I mean. <laughs> Barry said maybe she kicked him out. <laughs> I, that Okay, that's a good point, Barry. Maybe he's, you know, got a bachelor pad going on out there. Ooh, I'm going to have to uh, draw the line right there. I mean, why would he do that when he could just go to the Cypress District out there? Rob Barry hook him up on a cabin. No yeah, problem. Right, quick like. Hmm. Well, there. see, that's a little better shot. I mean, so it needs some, you know, work on the outside tiles and needs the lawn cut. But the, I, look, his lawn's not in any worse shape than mine right now. Um, I, does that look like they're living out there to y'all? No, nah, that it? one right there, the grass is mowed. It's kept yeah. up. I mean, you know, if you're living somewhere, you're going to keep up the grass like you said you were keeping up your grass at your house. But, hey, I got to tell you, you know, there was a little bit of dialogue in, in one of the messages and that somebody said that this property and maybe some of our sleuths that send us some information can can track this down and send it to us. But there was somebody that said that allegedly – an engineering firm in Bossier Parish formerly owned part of this property. They were partners in it. Mm. And and I don't know if that's accurate or inaccurate, but then they they did something to give it all to Butch Ford. Did you hear that, Rex? Oh, look, it could be the case, but it's still, and, and that's very interesting stuff. There's the entrance to the property, I guess, um, out oh, there on Parish let, Camp Road. Let me guess. This is our gated community. That's the gate. And look, they've got some improving to do. Maybe they're going to put a new gate up. I'm just I mean, trying to play. I'm trying to give Butch the benefit of the doubt. Butch is a nice guy. Look, I, I grew up in Halton. And back in the day, I mean, that would have been a respectable gate. I mean, I you yeah, know, I, you know, uh, maybe they don't want the front entrance to look too good. And look, Maybe maybe Barry's on to something. Sally kicked him out. He's out there in the bachelor pad at the camp house at the lake, may, you know, sleeping in a sleeping bag or a fold-up cot or whatever. I don't know. I'm just telling well, you what we see here, and in full disclosure, I know I haven't been out there to this property to look at it. I haven't flown my drone out there or anything like that. Duke, have you actually been out there? Well, I, I do have to admit I have been out there. Oh, no. This has got me intrigued. <laughs> you called me out live on the show. Actually, 
I was working a well out there around December, November of last year and was going by this property every single day. And I got to tell you, I never saw any activity out there. Oh, um, well, okay. I didn't. I was looking, but. Look, I, I, I think Greg Bell's on to something. Now we know why the house is in the shape that it is. We, you t he, Greg Bell called us out. He said, you two still keep missing his beer keg by the steps. Shame on us. We should have caught this beer keg yes, right here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm Greg. A, but I'm going to call Greg out. You know, I mean, what bachelor is going to have a beer keg there without a barbecue pit? I, I wonder I'm if just, it's Bud Light. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. There's no barbecue right. pit. Where are they doing the pig roast? <laughs> All and, right. So that's the deal, folks. I mean. That, David Crockett. And, and here's where I want to segue. David Crockett says, our police jury knows he is stretching the truth. At what point do you stop trusting your jurors? And and that is what I want to focus on. If, you know, we, we, we started out going into this segment talking about the lawlessness of the Cypress District and that the police jury is the worst offender in having allowed the lawlessness to go on at the Cypress District. They enabled it. Here we are again. You know, you've got another case of which appears to be lawlessness. And you can't tell me that your police jurors, just like what David Crockett is saying here, I just, I do not believe that they didn't know. And I mean, one of them's a, one of them's a, 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 a what, what do they call them? A, a, a something of the court they're supposed to be like officer a of, of the court or whatever yeah, yeah officer of the court she's a police juror she's an officer of the court well julie ferris uh brings up a great question so now what well i i mean bobby's I, bobby's office the tax Bozier uh, parish tax assessor's office has removed uh, unless something's changed in the couple of days since we've received this information um they have removed his homestead exemption has stated it does not constitute proof that you are indeed occupying the above property it doesn't appear from the photos that anybody is occupying that property and so julie brings up a good question so now what what do they do are, is the police jury just going to ignore it like they do the Robert Barry stuff? I mean, they could. What well, the I heck think, is the law? Yeah, to to all of y'all watching, your elected officials, they probably are just going to ignore it because why should they do anything? Because what are you going to do? You're not. What are you going to do? You're not yeah. going to do anything. Uh, Barry Butler says all of them took an oath of office to uphold the laws of Louisiana. That's true, Barry. But how do you challenge them? You got to file a lawsuit. What's the state police just going to show up to the next police jury meeting and escort Butch out of there because he doesn't appear to be occupying the property? I mean, literally, what's the recourse for this? I hadn't looked close enough at the statutes to see if there really is any. I mean, I would argue that if Bobby's office is correct. The tax assessor's office is correct that he is not occupying that property. I think you kind of hit on it, Duke. I mean, is this fraud, filing false documents? I mean, where does this go? Yeah, at, at what point do any of your elected officials have any accountability? Because as it stands right now, and you can't tell me, I won't believe for one minute, not every single police juror just like in the Robert Berry case, they've all known, you know, what's going on with Robert Berry. You can't tell me that they don't know what's going on with Butch Ford. And, you know, they take an oath to uphold the Constitution and the laws of the state of Louisiana. And, you know, to to not address these kinds of things and to enable, I'm going to say enable these things, that makes them an accomplice to it. And, and I, I, I mean, look, I'll say it this way. I liked Juliana Parks. I really did. But I think I saw real quick that she's no different than any of the other politicians. It was all talk. And you know, when she said that, you know, she's going to 
uphold things. Where where is she at on this? She she's not said a thing. It's go along to get along, and she should be challenged. And and every single person on that police jury should be challenged. Every single one of them. I agree. If we keep letting them get by with with the little stuff, then it just emboldens them to get by with the bigger stuff. And unless we really challenge them, challenge them at the meetings, challenge them by emailing them, writing them, watching the show, sharing our show out, sharing this information out, uh, running for office. People, Rex, people have got to start stepping up to the plate. That's the problem. It's just like that term limits thing. You know, oh, you can't do nothing. You can't do nothing. Bull crap. We did something. There's your example. You can do something. And right. to all of you watching, I mean, these people that are going to run, Michael Ferris, look, you, you, you're right here on our show. You support the show. We appreciate that and respect that. But I'm telling you right now, you run in that office, you've got an obligation to do what, what your elected officials right now are not doing because what you're running on, you're running to say, you're running to say, I'm different and I'm going to do something. And that's what every politician, I'm not just picking on you, Michael, but every politician says, vote for me. I'm going to do something. And they get in there and they don't, they don't get in there and they don't stand up. They go along to get along. Mm, I can think of one police juror that did that exact thing. That that's right. And, but what we need is people to get in there and have a mind of their own, not to become part of the collective. It's, it's like they go up there and how many people are start or trekkers? They become a part of the Borg. They're assimilated. Yes, they do. They become a part of the, the good old boy network at, you know, whatever level. Now, Julie Ferris, she's got a good point. She says she guesses she'll run for District 2 since she doesn't have to actually live there. Good point. That, that is exactly what I thought. Because I got to tell you, when they enabled Butch Ford, and look, there was a similar shenanigan done in the in the uh, state central committee, state central or RPEC race, where they brought one of the Cypress district members to run against Mike Collier. Yeah, have to be a Republican. You know, I forget how many days, but it wasn't one day before qualifying. This cat goes and changes his party affiliation one day before qualifying to run against Mike Collier, it ends up going to court up there. And oh, by the way, Kelly, or not Kelly Long, I'm sorry. Uh, Ron Mashoda represents the guy and Kelly Long's sweet partner rules in favor that he can run when clearly the law says that he has to have been qualified as a Republican for a long time before that. The shenanigans are endless and we we need people to get involved and you need people who are going to walk the walk, not talk the talk. Well, and you know, that brings up a good point and you pretty much nailed it right there. You know, our role right now is to bring this stuff to light around Bozier and, you know, show everybody some of this, like we said from the beginning, some of this kind of inside baseball that's going on, present the documents, present the information, ad lib, and, you know, throw in our opinion on it as well. Um, but people have to step up. Every time there's a city council meeting and there's crickets chirping, it just pisses me off. Granted, I could go down to that city council meeting as well, but our role so far has been to take that video of the city council meeting and put our commentary on it when we need to. So everybody's got their role and their place and their lane that they need to get in. And we need some people to step up. Um, Michael Ferris, Renee, I, I strongly encourage you to consider either you or David running for police juror. Um, we've got to have people that will step up and then have some semblance of integrity. This may seem like small stuff, but it's really not. Yeah. I mean, and, and, you know, there, there's a hundred people watching and I'm assuming the majority with the exception of Greg Bell, wherever you're at, Greg, uh, live in Bossier and you, these are your elected officials. You should be demanding to know why they are lawless. They're going to give you some fluff that maybe, oh, I didn't know, or whatever. 
but you need to demand that they explain to you how they perceive it justified, you know, for the Cypress district, how they perceive it justified for, you know, them to appoint all themselves to the library board, another issue of lawlessness that, that we've mentioned, how this with Bush Ford, they didn't even advertise it. Didn't even advertise it. You, you're telling me that there's no professional engineers out there that would like to have a chance to be the engineer of our parish and better it. it I'm going to, th- here, let's throw us, let's not let the school board out here. It's like the school board. Why is it that no professional outside of Bozier can get a shot at, you know, becoming the superintendent of Bozier? Why is it, and why does it always have to be a coach? Why does it always have to be a coach? You're telling me that we don't have just straight up educators in Bozier Parish that could be the superintendent and run the system? They have to be a coach? Y'all explain that one to me. I can't figure it out. Yeah. Well, I, you know, it, we're, we're at this, you know, fork in the road. Well, it's not really a fork in the road. We're at this bridge again where we've presented the information. We've presented the documents. I'll make sure and post them, you know, to the Facebook page after the show. Uh, after in, I get through doing the podcast. Innuendo, Rex. Oh, we're, yeah. It's all, it's all innuendo that we're putting out here, you know, and lies and deceit. Right. <laughs> but we're going we're gonna <laughs> to post the documents. We literally read from the official documentation tonight. I mean, I don't know how much more factual we can get. Yes, we did interject our opinions, but it's based on the documents in front of us. So it's up to y'all. What do you do from here? I can tell you the first thing you need to do, everybody needs to email every police juror and let them know y'all are aware of what's going on and you're pissed off about it. Ask ask these candidates that have already said they're running. Michael Ferris. I, I've met with Michael Ferris. I mean, look, I know his opponent, Bob Brotherton, and I know Michael Ferris. Michael Ferris, I'm telling you, is a, a strong will guy, and I know he's not scared to speak up and say his mind. Hell, he's told me and disagreed with me and told me what he thought, and I respect that. Um, you know, Keith Sutton, you know, the, what did uh, somebody said, two old guys on a curb or whatever? Um, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know Keith real well. I, Keith, I, I want you to come on the show because I, yeah. I got to tell you, I want to vet you. I want to ask you some questions, but they don't have to come on our show. All of y'all can call these guys and and squeeze them, pin them down. And look, let me say something else too. We don't all have to have a hive mindset and group think. There are some things that Chris Smith has done. I don't 100% agree with. There are a few things, you know, and I kind of start up a little, little bit of controversy calling uh, saying that was going to be a softball game with his interview and all that. That doesn't mean I don't like Chris and appreciate what he's done or any of the rest of the South Bossier guys. But look, I forgot to put Shane's picture up there earlier. I still respect Shane. Uh, cheat him a lot. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with how, uh, how Shane and Tommy handled the whole CAO business, but on balance, I absolutely respect Shane uh, for what he stands for, you know, and we've had our differences in the past too, but what I'm saying is we don't all need to have the group think that doesn't mean we always all get along and agree a hundred percent. It's okay to disagree, but disagree and make your points clear on why you disagree. Yeah. When, when was the last time the police jury disagreed on something? Oh, yeah. When was the last time there was a no vote? Well, probably about the last time there was at the Cypress District, and I've gone back a long ways and can't find one. That's right. But in Bossier City, the the last contentious thing was the port deal, and as a result of that contention, you had, even though I didn't like the way that it turned out, I, I didn't, you know, but I, I have to acknowledge and admit you had the best dialogue, the public was the most informed as a result of the disagreement and and people debating you you had the most informative you know public on a subject matter that has taken place in a long time so it's not a bad thing to have dissension and have people disagreeing on issues and debating it and talk about it and when you're not having it that's when you've got a problem when you're well 
And, and I'll say this, you know, a lot, a lot of people say, oh, well, yeah, but you guys, y'all have got the live show that you do. And, you know, we reach a few thousand folks around the Bossier area. But look, anybody has an open invitation to come on the show. Specifically, any of the politicians or bureaucrats or anybody running for office or any of our guests, just let us know. Come on in, you know, or, or start your own podcast. We'll be glad to tell you how to do it, how we do it. Uh, you know, but the look, point open, is open everybody right, has a platform. Everybody has a platform. I Open it up right now. Let's send, let's send, let's, let's get some people call in. Who wants to call in? Tag us or whatever. You can come in right now. He's watching on YouTube uh, and glad to have you watching on YouTube, Keith. He says, neither one of us are old. <laughs> that wasn't us that said that. It was somebody in the comments. Gee, gee, I'm two old guys. <laughs> Last week I was chubby and scruffy. Now nah, nah, I'm old, dude. We might have to box. That's no, it, we, yeah. We're it's, the old guys. <laughs> it's going to be Elon and Zuckerberg and Duke and Shane. We're all going to have it out. That, that's hilarious. So. Yeah, no, I was quoting. I got to go back up there and see. Somebody said, I think it was Val Baker said, them two old guys. <laughs> go uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't me. <laughs> Michael Ferris brings up a good point. Says, why after qualifying next week? Is qualifying next week? When is qualifying? When, what's the uh, uh, date of qualifying, Michael? Is it, is it next week? I hadn't even looked. Dude, you and I were looking at the calendar earlier yesterday, but I don't remember when it was. I will tell you that early voting starts in two months, two months. Mm. So I, I would guesstimate that qualifying probably is a couple of weeks to a month. That's probably about right. Renee Hall says August 8th. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. So anyway, we'll start kind of wrapping the show up. Hey, we appreciate everybody watching. This is the, the largest audience we've had in a few weeks. You know, it's usually pretty slow during the summertime and, you know, with the holidays and, and, and all that and uh, schools out and all that sort of thing. So it usually does slow down and usually there's not, you know, a lot of controversy coming on or going on in the political arena around here, but we really appreciate everybody watching tonight and look, Take this information and do something about it. I yep. think that that needs to be the main message from tonight. And it, it isn't that you can't be effective and you can't do something. You can do something. You can be successful. I mean, look, uh, Colonel Crockett and everybody that supported the Term Limits Coalition, you know, the Bossier Parish Republican Executive Committee, all as a group, we effectively did something. We all put our minds to it. We accomplished a goal that, you know, is going to benefit Bozier for years to come. And, oh, by the way, Shane Cheatham, Val Baker did say, I'm looking at it, it says they still have their show, Two Dads on the Sidewalk. So I, it wasn't old guys, but it was two dads on the sidewalk. <laughs> okay, there they are. They're dads. You know, that's that's cool. I guess. They are. Um, they are. All right. So you know, so we ad lived a little bit. Two old guys. Whatever. Come on. Yeah, it was. It was. It wasn't fun. It was in yeah, fun. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anything else for tonight, Mister Lauer? I mean, we, we've we've. Show him what's going on again with Butch Ford and that he's got some real issues and so does the police jury. We've discussed the positive news of term limits and the achievement of the signatures for the petition and turning that into the city. And, of course, we show that the heirs is not going to do any detailed billing or at least not reveal it because, well, they... Open they checkbook. Won't. I'm not going to send no detail. Uh, open checkbook. Yeah, they're on the taxpayer dime. So... Uh, anyway, yeah, there's Robert Wright. Of course, everybody's uh, chiming hey, in about the qualifying dates. Hey, Keith Sutton's commenting. We ought to get Keith to come on right now. Yeah. You got time to come on, Keith? Or let's get him scheduled for next week. Either one, whatever you want to do. Yeah, either way. I mean, I, look, I did meet Keith at uh, the uh, Bozier Parish Republican Executive Committee. Uh, seems like a straight shooter. Um, you know, I have watched him on the two guys on the sidewalk with Shane. Um, you know, they've got some, uh, entertaining content. Uh, I'd encourage people to go and, uh, watch that. I, but I, I, I admittedly, I do want to delve into Keith's, uh, political ideology a little deeper. Um, I Fair do want to go there. I Fair do want to go there. 
Hey, uh, before we close out, Shane, if you're still watching, uh, or Keith, uh, what time is the Sobo luncheon tomorrow? Is that the one that uh, Chris Turner and Doty are going to be at speaking? What time is that at? We'll make sure and acknowledge that in the show or share it out on the on the feed too. Uh, we plan to have several guests, and uh, I think haven't we already talked? Uh, let's see, we've already got the green light from Chris Turner and from Doty too. Yeah. We just got to get it scheduled, right? Yeah, Chris and Doty have uh, officially uh, said that you know they're going to come on the show, and and we're going to have a debate. And you know the the thing is, Rex, and you know this, and folks watching, most of the time, you know, when you you see these candidates at events, um, just like you know the Sobo luncheon, and I'm not being critical because it's important to have these. The folks come, they introduce themselves, they talk, and they they tell them, but you don't really have the candidates themselves, you know, facing uh, questions from each other or being able to, I hate to say go at it, but, you know, iron sharpens iron. I mean, you, you need them to be able to draw the distinctions and they can draw those distinctions if they're enabled to be able to go at each other. And we've done that in the past in the Bossier City Council race, you know, Brian Hammonds ended up winning that race. Um, we had uh, Mike Lombardino and uh, I forget the other candidate's name was in that race. They had a good debate. We did the Bessie debate. That went really well. And uh, I, I think this election cycle, it's going to be imperative that you have, especially in the legislature, um, you have these candidates kind of go at it because uh, – what I see shaping up is I see us potentially have an opportunity for Louisiana to really turn the page. I, I, I see an opportunity for Louisiana to finally cross over that hurdle that, that we've all longed to happen and it just had never happened, but you know, we could, we could screw it up. Um, we, we seems like we're good at that. And I think we need to really uh, dot our I's and cross our T's in the legislative races. We need to let the candidates go at it, and we need to be clear in our minds as to what we support and what we oppose and, you know, who we're going to support and who we're going to oppose. Good point. And so just to be clear, Shane Cheatham said that the Sobo luncheon is tomorrow at noon, going to 1.30. Our good friend Brian Hammonds, city councilman, says it's been changed to the cafeteria at Elm Grove Junior. Uh, that's, the, I guess, the junior high or middle school or whatever down there. So anyway, um, if you want to go check that out, we highly encourage you to uh, you know, listen to the candidates in whatever venue. And like you said, Duke, um, you know, in our case, we like to have them not go at it per se, but we like to challenge them a little bit. I'll, I'll say this, the Sobo luncheon that Seabiscuit spoke at, uh, I guess it was, what, the last one or about a month ago or whatever, that was kind of interesting. He kind of didn't hold back a little bit. So anyway. Yeah, but but he but he needed he needed to be challenged. Right. You know, he needed yeah. to be challenged and have the opportunity to challenge. And it's kind of uncomfortable for candidates to challenge each other in, in that setting, it, it's really hard to do. And, right. uh, you know, anyway, we're going to do it. Um, yeah. it, it needs to happen. It's been needing to happen and we're going to make it happen. Yeah. We'll provide the boxing gloves and the microphones and away they go. <laughs> All right, Mr. Lowry, anything else? Nope. Just thank everybody for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, pass the message. Tell everybody about what you learned tonight. And uh, hopefully we didn't insult your intelligence too terribly much. Hey, I want to take a uh, personal privilege. Thank you, Colonel Crockett, Barry Butler, you know, Shane Cheatham, John Burns, um, you know, to, to everybody that helped us gather signatures on the term limits petition in Bossier City. Thank you for, you know, your time. I mean, time's the most valuable thing we have in any of our lives. It's not money. It's not assets. It's not anything. It's time. You gave time. Brian Haygood, hat tip to all you guys. Thank you. Yep. You said it best. Let's get out of here. We're gone, folks. See you all next week. Good night.